uh, yeah uh, hello friends uh, so hope uh, you can hear me uh, so this is harish uh, co-founder of uh, infant engineers uh, handling the, the learning experience part uh, so i guess we could uh, kick start yeah uh, so the whole uh, point of discussion that, that I have taken is how to design uh, enriching hands-on learning experience. Uh, we have been in the field of uh, hands-on learning for the past five years. And so we went through a lot of experience personally uh, uh, till date. And, and so we have interacted with a lot of children, parents, teachers, and, and we came up to this stage now. So, uh, so I feel very really happy uh, for an opportunity uh, in this 100 platform to speak about this and reach uh, this idea to, to all of you. Uh, so I'm, I'm really impressed by the way 100 is connecting a lot of uh, uh, education innovations around the world. And so there have been a lot of inspiring ideas uh, uh, that I've seen personally. So uh, would love to, to stay connected uh, after this. Uh, after this uh, session and uh, so we could we could take this journey forward together if things work out well so i would like to uh, start uh, by introducing uh, infinite engineers and how it is uh, started so we started during our uh, college final years where uh, we were part of this uh, system in india so i'm i'm uh, from chennai so that's the southern part of uh, india uh, where we went through uh, usual schooling system and then uh, myself, my other co-founders, uh, Jaykan, Tarvin, then my co-team, uh, Vimal, Jay Kumar, we're all part of the same uh, college. Uh, so we used to interact uh, like how we were uh, not given the right hands-on exposure. Uh, so we're all been following a theoretical uh, learning structure. So we are we learn something by look into a textbook and there is no real way of applying that in real life and directly we, uh, we take an exam, pass and move on. So uh, we never had uh, uh, and, and space to question that in our school system, but during our college system, so we discussed uh, within our college mates and uh, uh, so we had an interesting conversation where like how can we uh, uh, take hands-on learning to schools and that's uh, that side has a very uh, crazy idea of, of, of uh, from people who have not uh, from the system so we were studying in college but we thought of doing something within the schools uh, so we never uh, had a second thought but to go into the school and, and check like how it is the situation there so when we went there into the school system, it was a, a different challenge altogether uh, because uh, being outside the system, there can a lot that can be told about its negatives and like what and all it's not happening. But being part of the whole system, being going into the school, getting uh, the perception of the teacher, uh, principal, the authorities, we got a very different perspective from them. Uh, and we started doing uh, mini hands-on experiments that are related to engineering. So we made uh, mechanical models, electrical, and we had small branches and like we went to schools and started doing things hands-on. So it was first time where we stood before children as, as teachers and, and it was a, a crazy experience standing before them uh, right during when we were during the final years of our college. But the way the hands-on learning has been received by the students gave us a lot of uh, motivation uh, for us to uh, take it forward to the next level. So during uh, our initial years, 2014, 15, we went uh, uh, to a lot of schools, did a pilot testing in different capacities and, and came to a lot of um, interesting insights. And that's where we got a, a need. Uh, the need arose from the the school system from the teachers where they want to uh, they wanted us to do something for the science curriculum uh, so here in india so it's it's all about exams marks mostly where uh, it's all theoretical driven and there there have been 
labs running in school uh, they are being smart classes at different capacities but still uh, teachers were finding difficult to reach some of the concepts to the children and there we found a need of of building a, a portable science laboratory that can be uh, that can be done within the classrooms so there is no need of a separate infrastructure uh, so in indian situation an average uh, classroom strength could be anywhere between like 30 to 50 so all those children are there in the classroom and during the science periods it will be like like a chalk and talk or an interaction or a smart class so we thought of uh, we thought of reducing the gap between uh, the the blackboard and the students and only way uh, that can be done is to give them a hands on uh, tool which they can experiment then and there uh, within the classroom and and understand the concept uh, and ask questions and all those things can happen so we designed something called a dexter box so uh, to just show you and how it feels so this is how uh, the dexter box will look like so it's like a portable uh, box which uh, contains uh, activities games experiments related to science curriculum so whatever kids learn from age 10 to uh, 14 so we have uh, took up those concepts and built an experience around it uh, so as i said before it can be an experiment where they all the 30 40 students within the classroom are are doing it and like and waiting for the results or it can be a game that they are figuring out in the classroom and all those things will happen with the teacher within the classroom and here the role of a teacher is more of a facilitator uh, so uh, so we really uh, want teachers to be like facilitating the learning experience uh, and uh, uh, so that's uh, so where we are heading to so we got uh, a very interesting uh, space in schools where dexter box being applied and like and being taken forward and it's been three years since we are doing hands-on science learning within uh, school classrooms. And every year there has been a tremendous learning experiences for us, the core team personally. Because initially, to be frank, we thought that a, a simple science kit would, would, would take care of everything. I mean, if you give the kit to a classroom and, and everything will fall into place and like children will understand the concept, uh, teachers work would be easier. And everything will fall in place so those were our assumptions during initial times but uh, it's not just the the product i mean it's not just the kit alone we evolved from the kit to an experience uh, to give an example um, for example if there is a concept of electric circuits that they are learning and you're going to design uh, a kit for it and it's it's simple you know like we have leds batteries wires and you give it to them and once children sees those materials, they get super excited and, and, and then they come up with their own things. Uh, initially, there was not much. There was like, we gave them manuals, like step-by-step -step, uh, instructions as manuals. Uh, and nobody actually read the manuals while doing the kit. So manual was just uh, lying next to them. And all those things we were observing and uh, we thought that it was not going as per how we have thought. So we slowly like evolved and, and, and started listening to the voices of children and the teacher. So hands-on kit definitely makes them more engaged to science, but uh, what more can we give them like, to, to make them engage to the concept? And we should also have an, an learning outcome of uh, asking questions and, uh, and taking the experiment to the next level. So all those things happened when we started to build an experience around the kit. So when we go to, when after then, when we started going to classrooms, we started with a story uh, where if there is an experiment called Simple Pendulum, so we started uh, the story of Galileo and, and we gave them a pause at the end saying that, okay, what will happen after this? And then we gave them the, uh, the Simple Pendulum pouch, for example, I'll be having that, okay. So this is how it looks. Uh, our individual uh, kit looks like this. So it's called a simple pendulum kit where it will have uh, all the necessary materials uh, to build the particular experiment.
so they uh, once we lead the story the purpose is all set okay now uh, every one of in the classroom will act like a scientist and and find out it so here they will have uh, this is a refined version of brain book where we uh, neglected step by step procedure but rather gave them a more of a a display kind of thing so where they will see this and will the experiment so so it's more of they they see uh, they have a task in hand they are materials uh, they need to experiment now and find out uh, the time period of a simple pendulum and what factors affect the time period and they will write down an observations here so they have a tabular column which uh, they will have it and every student will write it so at the end of the experiment uh, like 30 minutes after they will have their own uh, results and they they tabulate it and and then they will come to a conclusion of what really changes the time period so the teacher's role is there to like just observe the students like what questions they are asking and what kind of thinking is happening through them and it's it's totally driven by the students themselves though so they take the responsibility of learning themselves and 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 they take the the responsibility of understanding the concept we just providing them a, an ambience there to to think and apply what they learn and now we could confidently be sure of that they have they have understood the concept so it's we have given them a situation and we have given them a task now they start to think and apply so uh, so dexter box uh, kids have been evolved over the period of time through these kind of uh, activities as such and we started working on uh, challenging concepts that teacher would come up with saying that okay can you design an experience for this concept so we'd be happy to sit as a team uh, uh, where we brainstorm come up with a whole sort of uh, ideas and and take it forward so simply put my team consists of like like designers who who transforms a concept into an experience they they design the kit activity game uh and uh, uh there'll be production people who would manufacture these kits and ship it to schools and the 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 third uh people who are also very important is the the people who take all these and go to schools and sit with teachers and like and sync with their system uh and and uh so it's been a very wonderful uh, learn, learning journey for us because here uh the exam system doesn't demands hands on learning but still a lot of schools have responded positively to the idea saying that they believe that understanding should be an experience so that's where uh, everything started so children experiment the kit and and they understand it and take it forward uh, to the next level so this is ideology so we believe in hands on learning we believe in uh, for the kids to make mistakes while they learn they do they make mistakes they learn so so this is a, the criteria that that we work on and so i just want to quote very uh, uh, two instances that i would like to share during our uh, school experience uh, where we thought that we should really listen to to kids Uh, so one situation is where while one of our visit to schools we just randomly pose them a question what uh, what would a dream school what is your dream school and we thought okay children will come with very like I mean usual ideas of uh, or fancy ideas or fantasy ideas and all this stuff but uh, they made a very uh, uh, a few points which we, we were like astonished uh, so th- some students said that they want democracy within classrooms i mean they want equal rights to speak and like opportunity should be there uh they said there should be two black boards i mean one for the teachers and one for the students and and the classroom arrangement uh, usually in, in indian context is fixed i mean we have benches rows i mean you can't really alter and like and move around so it'll be like you come on the morning you sit on the same place the whole day so they wanted flexibility in seating arrangements and uh, so that they could they could collaborate on on few projects and all those things made one point more clear that i mean they are the end consumers of education and their voices should definitely be heard uh, to implement what they need and uh, to implement 
important uh, things to take their learning to the next level. So from then on, uh, it's been a three years journey with them and we've interacted to close to like, like 10,000 kids on different forum. We make sure that we, we pause for a moment and speak to a kid saying that how uh, these kind of learning is impacting his or her learning. Uh, and the second uh, uh, instant I want to say is, so I did a, a, a workshop, a similar Dexterbox workshop for a, uh, for a class uh, sixth grade student. So uh, after doing a, a, a particular uh, project uh, and I asked them, uh, uh, initially I told them that I told them a wrong statement and then I corrected again and, and saying that why you are believing me now. Uh, they simply told that because you are a teacher. So uh, children uh, uh, have a perception that if you're a teacher, I believe whatever you say. And being that in a science classroom, uh, we want to break that down. Okay, nobody has, to, nobody has to believe anybody in science, especially, unless you experiment and see for a proof, uh, you should not believe it. So from then on, we, we got, got into the sh shoes of scientific learning where uh, you don't have to believe what scientists have said. Experiment yourself and figure out for yourself. It's your final proof whether you're going to accept or not. So that gave them a lot of uh, uh, opportunity for thinking and, and they are very clear that, okay, this is just a statement in a textbook. Let me try out an experiment to see if it is really that way. And, and that, that worked out pretty well in our, in our classroom. And from then on, we don't really like push the concepts on students. We just give them an environment for them to uh, to learn uh, in a more scientific method. I mean, they learn by doing testing uh, and ask questions. The asking questions is something that uh, they do regularly, uh, so that they also have uh, a, a call to them. So that okay, we should ask questions. I mean, unless we do that, then we don't uh, get into the concepts. So. So that's our journey of uh, Dexterbox. It's, it's going good. Uh, so we are evolving in the process and we're also planning how we can integrate a uh, story to it and, and more engagements, uh, uh, bigger scale demos within the classrooms and all those things are in the pipeline where you take this to a lot more uh, schools. And eventually uh, Dexterbox as, as do-it-yourself kit will transform into a design-it-yourself kit where kits themselves can design experiments, uh, games, activities for their classrooms, for their uh, friends. And it will be, it'll be the next uh, big thing that could happen you know, when they are their own designers. Uh, so this texture box is triggering those kind of emotions in them. And so that's for, uh, uh, so that's how uh, we are evolving and yeah, we have a question, how can the 100 communities support you in this journey? Yes. So uh, I'll come, up, uh, come on this for sure. And the next I want to tell is about uh, uh, so how we got evolved from Dexterbox. So Dexterbox is, is one thing that we primarily do it. And with that, we are working on a couple of other projects uh, to briefly look. Uh, so one is the nonsense camp. Uh, the nonsense camp is a name itself would signify it as no boundaries. So we want to come out of the school curriculum boundary and design experiences for kids as an after school activity centers that is going pretty well. And, and that, that's where we tried all these STEM challenges from egg drop, marble run, marshmallow, and all those stuffs comes in there. Uh, and uh, STEM challenges, we get a lot of online resources in STEM challenges, but unless you go to ground and try it with kids, it's like you're not, you're not trying it. So we, we keep trying different challenges and from that we get an, an idea to a, a, to a new challenge and, and all those things happen. So, and, and the next uh, two other projects is something that that's, uh, came up very recently. So one is called uh, uh, the Science on Stage where we integrate uh, theater and science together. So it's like a science drama as an audience, you will come as a family with your kids, you sit there and enjoy one and a half hours show. And in that uh, story, uh, science concepts would be weaved in through experiments, activities, and like uh, some ha ha moments will be there and, and, and you get out with a uh, with lot of fun, excitement about science. 
and and the last part is we started building maker spaces so we believe that a uh, maker everybody is a maker by themselves in, in different uh, in different ways so we want to identify what kind of maker a kid is in the classroom so they have text about they have done but uh, many children come up with an innovative idea that they want to try so we are working with schools in setting up uh, maker labs uh, uh, within the school system where they can get an opportunity to try out or uh, make things that they want to do in life so so that's that's also going uh, going good and uh, yes so finally coming to like how 100 community uh, uh, support in this journey is yes uh, so uh, 100 has been uh, is, is something that i got to know uh, like 6 months or so uh, and and after that they got to know about their ambassador program and got applied for that and now i could see i could regularly scroll into 100 website to know like how uh, new innovations come in so i i typically type hands on learning in the search bar and see like like what uh, other people are doing in different parts of the world and it's so uh, amusing to see their work uh, so so we are we are open to cross collaboration on the idea uh, something that we are doing it here could add value to people in other parts and it's vice versa so we are we are always keen to look in for opportunities where we can collaborate and 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 add value to the learning experience of a kid and finally that's where it end to so so we see uh, us as different people getting together for uh, for a learning of a child uh, so i i uh, I'm regularly using 100 and I'll post more about infant engineers and, uh, and our work in the platform soon so that other people could, uh, could take a look uh, at it. Uh, so, and so this is how uh, I want to, uh, I want you uh, people to, to understand that uh, what we are doing and finally made, uh, uh, yeah, so at the end, like there are, Two other points that I want to like say stress upon is so we consider, uh, I mean, infant engineers as a company that designs learning experiences. Uh, so learning experience in the sense like it's it's designing a movie script. Okay, so it'll have all the emotions in. So we take up a concept and or a core idea and an experience should, should can contain kids, videos, games, activities, comics, uh, live uh, theater performances and everything is an hands on so you have no boundaries to it so we keep on adding value to an experience and say like how it is evolving over a period of time and uh, and that's where our journey is our excitement lies in uh, the next is uh, as a, as a topic uh, uh, says so how to design enriching learning experiences i just want to sum up uh, our learnings over these years so one is uh, involve uh, children in the in the process of designing it because we feel as adults we could only relate to how I mean how this kid uh, would engage the children I can only like assume things so we are getting into a shoes of child but it's not easy at all so we bring in kids to our office and whatever you're seeing now is our experience center so we have an R and D space where we generally brainstorm so we invite kids to our space to have a discussion on different topics to understand what they're looking up for uh, so involve them in the process and uh, uh, and understand the real need of the system i mean be it our kit uh, the dexter box lies in the central point of parents teachers and children uh, teachers and kids interact that in a school system and they take the the same kit to home and interact uh, uh, with the parents with the same uh, experience so we regularly listen to them, uh, their experience undergoing these type of learning, their challenges, and all those things add value to our experience. Uh, and and be a facilitator. So uh, so when we go into classrooms, we don't go as teachers. We go there as uh, go there as co-learners, where we tell friends, yeah, we're going to learn a thing together. So let's explore. So children not only get a feel that there is nobody to pass on information, they're going to figure it ourselves and it's going to be a guided learning and where uh, there will be a peer to peer learning happening and uh, there'll be a, 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 
a point where even the facilitator is clueless of what to what to do next but he like puts the task to a fellow kid and say like let's let's figure out together so so all those things will happen in our environment and yeah so uh, yes so we'll i'll definitely share on the 100 open platform uh, so that like uh, more people uh, will will uh, could able to see this and i'm also like looking forward to read many other stories or uh, from people who are working on a similar segment of hands-on learning, project-based learning, uh, anything that that gives an experience and through that children learn stuff. Uh, so, yes, I think uh, uh, I'm done with this. Just a final uh, thing that I want to show you is uh, one of our activities that we have designed uh, for digestive system. So we also work on uh, the physics, biology and chemistry part of of science, so it's biology and chemistry is a little bit challenging in designing uh, experiments and all. So for biology, interestingly, for digestive system, there came a, a new opportunity to, to design an experiment. So we came up with the concept of uh, a board game. So where uh, children need to understand different parts of digestive system and uh, uh, that can happen uh, while they play a board game. So they keep the tokens here and they move through mouth, esophagus, uh, liver, stomach, small intestine. And uh, so, and while while going through that, they encounter different questions. There'll be cards that they share. And uh, this really uh, suited well within a classroom where teacher gave them the kit, they worked as a team and, and they have done. So it's just one example of like how our thought process is, but it's still, there are a lot more that need to be explored in this space and we are on a on a learning journey uh, so as a young uh, engineers turned educators uh, we believe that there is a lot to be done within education system in, in india uh, and and by the way also working in singapore so we can relate to a context there as well so we are coming up with uh, a solid learning experiences that that makes children to enjoy the process it's not about the, the outcome or that it's just they learn for the sake of learning but not just for the, the outcome so they enjoy the process and, and uh, we believe that a lot can be done together by by collaborating by uh, listening to the uh, to the ideas of others and how we can we can uh, take it forward together uh, so and once again uh, thanks to Puk and uh, 100 uh, for giving an opportunity uh, to do a live uh, uh, for uh, that gives uh, me an opportunity to, uh, to explain about our work. Uh, so uh, uh, great uh, connecting with all the people and uh, looking forward uh, to more such conversations. And uh, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you once again. And like you can check out uh, Infinite's page in the caption. So where you could. Uh, we could like the page uh, and get to know regular updates about what we are doing in terms of uh, STEM workshops, Dexter box, and all those stuff. Uh, yes, so thank you. Thanks a lot. Cheers.